Hi, this is Dan Heisman, Philly Tutor for Chess FM. This is the Improve Your Chess video series for ICC members. In today's game, we're going to look at a game played at a 65 time rate, between two players rated around 1800. All right, so let's get right to the game. White plays e4, black plays c5 Sicilian, knight f3, d6, d4, open Sicilian, c takes d4, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6, Nadorf. All right, currently the most popular Sicilian. Um, for a while there, the Sveshnikov was um, fighting against it for maybe number one. I think right now the two big grandmaster defenses uh, against e4 are to play e5 and go into a Roy Lopez or, you know, with the Berlin or something, and to play Nadorf's. Um, all right, so white has a variety of lines against the Nadarf, and he plays bishop e3. Black now has a choice. He can play e5, which is the computer's main move, and the most popular grandmaster move. He can play e6 and go into a uh, Skavanigan, or he can play the knight to g4 line, which was very popular in the 90s, uh, not so popular today. All right, and black plays the most principled move, e5. He plays knight b3, the main book line. And now the most accurate for black is to play bishop e7 right away, or bishop e6, right? Okay, bishop e6, perfectly good here. In the bishop e2 variation, as opposed to the bishop e3 variation, there it's more accurate to play bishop e7 right away. Here, bishop e6 is actually a little more popular. Okay, so white plays f3. So this is a signal for the main line of the English attack. You know, white's going to castle queenside and push up his kingside pawns. Black's going to counterattack on queenside. Black plays knight bd7, main line, queen d2. White could also play g4 right away here on the next move. Black plays b5, again the main move. And white castles. And here again, black has some choices. He decides to play knight b6, which is an aggressive line. And now white plays the main move, which is something that I was a little unfamiliar with. Again, there's a lot of transpositions or possible permutations here. White plays queen f2. So white knows this line even better than I do. That is the main move. All right, and now black has several choices on what to do. Now, what should be an interesting choice is, should black put his rook on b8 or c8? c8 looks obvious because it's a semi-open file. But if this knight comes to c4 and white is forced to capture and black can capture back with a pawn, then black might want his rook here. So actually, since white's going to play g4 and g5 anyway, the main book move here is to let the rook wait flexibly on a8 for a move and play knight back to d7. This guards the knight on b6 a second time, uh, doesn't commit him to where he wants to go, doesn't commit the rook, so it's a very flexible move. And also the knight can come up to c5 in some lines. Now, I can't do that right away because it's attacked three times and only guarded twice, and the pawn's pinned. But after he plays a move like queen c7, um, you know, knight c5 might be pop possible. However, in this game, black immediately decides to put the rook on b8. And here the computer agrees with the grandmaster analysis that knight fd7 is better and that playing rook b8 right away is not the right idea. And one of the reasons is that knight f to d7 um, is more accurate is that here white can immediately play knight c5. If the knight was on d7, then the pawn would just take the knight because the, the d6 pawn would not be pinned to the queen by the rook on d1. But here it is. So, you know, this gives White a chance to activate that knight. So Black decides not to give White the bishop pair.